for perfect problem six for math 112. I given this triangle here and told that length A is 13 halves. Sorry about the fractions. Uh, side, the length of side C is that mess. Five plus 12 root three divided by two. I'm not just being mean here. I picked these out so that some answers will work, will work out nicely. Um, an angle measure A equals 30 degrees. I don't know if that's worded right, but whatever. That's saying that this right here is 30 degrees. Um, and that's all the information you're given except that the cosine of B is 513. So you don't know what angle this is right here, but you do know its cosine is 513. So maybe I'll just throw a B right here. And what we're trying to figure out is little b. And the way to do it, well, I want you to do it three different ways. First, by applying the law of cosines. So the law of cosines, well, there's three different versions of the law of cosines. They're all very similar. It just kind of depends on what you're solving for. So I want to solve for b. So I'm going to start out with the law of cosines that has b squared all by itself on one side. And sort of like Pythagorean's theorem, that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's like that, except now it's going to be b squared equals a pl squared plus c squared. Right? The other two letters go over here. This isn't quite true. Um, I need this adjusting factor because this is not a right triangle and this is not the hypotenuse of it. And the adjusting factor will be, you always have to subtract two times these two letters, so AC in this case, times the cosine of the angle opposite this length here, so in this case, cosine of B. So there's three different versions. You can have A squared over here, B squared over here, or C squared over here. If you have B squared, it'll look something like this. Now you just go plug it in the pieces. So let's see, A is given me to, to be 13 halves. So I get B squared is 13 halves squared plus C squared, ugh, five plus 12 root three divided by two squared minus two times A times C times cosine of b, which fortunately, I guess I don't even have to write cosine of b because that was given to me. The cosine of b is 5 thirteenths. And I guess since I threw everything else in parentheses, I'll throw that in parentheses. If I could simplify this right here, it would give me b squared. If I knew b squared, I could figure out b. So let's do it. Uh, 13 halves squared is the same as 13 squared over 2 squared. 13 squared is 169. So I got 169 over 4 plus... Well, let's see, I need to square the top and square the bottom. Squaring the bottom is easy, that's just four. Squaring the top is kind of a mess, you'll have to think foil. So five times five would give me 25. Five times 12 root three is 60 root three. But I have two of those, kind of the outside and the inside terms. So that gives me 120 root three. Um, and then 12 root three times 12 root three is the same as 12 times 12, which is 144 times three. Uh, 144 times 3 is 432, maybe? First of all, this is plus. Um, I better make sure that's right. What did I say that 12 times 12 is 144? So that's 6 less than 150. So 3 times that would be 18 less than 450, which is 432. I think that works out. Um, anyways... Multiplying these guys together, you could just multiply straight across, but if you notice, this 13 and this 13 over here will cancel each other out. And this 2 and this 2 will cancel each other out. So really all I'm going to have is, let's see, this entire thing, this is gone, this entire thing is gone, and this is gone. So I get 25 plus 60 root 3 divided by 2. Okay. Um, if I had a common denominator, I could add up the numerators of all of these guys. 169 over 4. Let's see, in this one I got 25 and 432. So that's 457, I think. Plus 120 root 3 over 4. And then over here I have a denominator of 2. I would like it to be 4. To make it 4, I'll multiply the top and the bottom by 2. That will make this 50 plus 120 root 3 divided by 4. Now I can add all those together. Um, how convenient, 120 root three minus 120 root three, those will cancel each other out. 167 plus 457 minus 50. Uh, not 167, 169. All right, I'm gonna pull out a calculator. 169 
plus 457 minus 50 is 576. So this all just becomes 576 divided by 4. But 576 divided by 4, my calculator tells me is 144. So what I have is that b squared is 144. And therefore, b is just 12. Um, okay, that'll work using the law of cosines. What about the law of sines? Didn't leave myself a ton of room over here, but I can hopefully squeeze it in. Here's part A. Let's do part B over here. Uh, the law of sines works anytime you know two pairs, and the pairs are made by angles and sides that are opposite each other. So what I'm saying is, I don't know angle C. So I can't use that at all in the law of sine, so I'm gonna ignore this side. I do know angle A and the side opposite A, so I can say that the sine of 30 degrees divided by 13 halves is the exact same as the sine of B divided by little b, which is what I'm trying to figure out. And you might take issue with that because you're like, yeah, we don't know the sine of B. However, I would argue that we do because if the cosine of B is 5 thirteenths, then I can draw a little right triangle. Here's B. Let's see, cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, and if you solve, uh, use Pythagorean's theorem to solve for this side, I think what you'll find is you get a 12 here. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. So this tells me that the sine of B is opposite over hypotenuse. It's 12 thirteenths. So from this information, you can figure out the sine of B is 12 thirteenths. So I can say that I got that the sine of 30, which is 1 half, divided by 13 halves is equal to 12 thirteenths divided by B. Lots of fractions going on, but you can make life a lot easier. On this side, multiply the top and the bottom by 2. Makes that 1 thirteenth. And that is equal to, if you think about this as, well, how should I do this? How about this? Also multiply both sides of the equation by B. That'll make this B over 13 is equal to 12 over 13. Hey, wait a minute. If B over 13 equals 12 over 13, I think I can figure out B. I think B is just going to be equal to 12. All right, multiply both sides of the equation by 13. And you got the B is 12. Hey, same thing I had over here. That's nice. Part C. Part C, it says come up with that answer, but don't use either of those laws. Sounds like I'm going to have to draw some triangles, create some right angles, see what I can do here. So let's try my best to draw something similar to what was given. And we'll fill in what we know. Um, we're given that this side right here is 13 halves. And that this entire length is 5 plus 12 root 3 divided by 2. Um, and this is 30 degrees. Maybe we can use that somehow. This is 30 degrees. Uh, I'm going to create a right triangle. Because without the law of sines and the law of cosines, I'm just going to have to use my trig functions independently, and it'll make it easier if I had a right triangle. Um, I know that the cosine of this angle right here, B, is 5 thirteenths. So the cosine, let's see, this is a very small picture. I think I can figure this out. Maybe I'll call this length down here X. Maybe, you know what? I don't have to draw it on the triangle. Let's do it right here. I'm going to say that the length from here over to here is, and I'm not going to use X, I'm going to use D. That's D. And I think I can figure out D because I know that the cosine of B is the adjacent length, which is D, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 13 halves. And I know that the cosine of B that was given to me in the problem is 5 thirteenths. So I got 5 thirteenths is equal to D divided by 13 halves. Um, multiply both sides of the equation by 13 halves. And I got 13 halves times 5 thirteenths is equal to D. 13's cancel, and I get that D is 5 halves. Okay, so this length right here is 5 halves. It's this, this length right here is 5 halves. But I could figure out, well, I could figure out a lot of stuff. What should I figure out next? 
you know what? I could figure out E here, but I'm not even going to bother. Once I know this, I can figure out this length. And once I know this length, I can figure out this hypotenuse that I was looking for using this angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out this, which maybe I'll call it H for height. And how should I do that? Uh, let's use Pythagorean theorem. So let's say that 5 half squared plus h squared is equal to 13 halves. Sorry, try that again. 13 halves squared. Okay, so 5 half squared is 25 fourths. And that plus h squared is equal to 169 fourths. If I subtract 25 fourths from both sides, I need to draw a little line there to indicate I'm working on a different part. Um, I get that h squared is equal to 144 over 4. Take the square root of both sides and you get that h is equal to 12 over 2, aka 6. And if I know that h is 6, I can finish up the problem by saying the sine of 30 degrees um, would be h over little b. I know that the sine of 30 degrees is just 1 half. I know that h is 6, so I could figure out b. Multiply both sides by b, multiply both sides by 2, and you get that b is equal to 12, which is the same answer I got up here and the same answer I got there. I did not use the law of sines or the law of cosines. I think I'm going to call that good and end this video here.